So first of all, thank you very much for joining us for the Kirby Institute seminar series. Um, the seminar actually has a, a double umbrella and is both part of the Global Health series and the Health Economic series. Um, my name is Susanna Vajneri. I am an associate professor um, at the Global Health Program where I lead the Neglected Tropical Diseases Research Group. Um, and I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands um, on which we gather today or join this uh, seminar online and pay my respects uh, to their elders past and present. In my case, I'd like to acknowledge the Bedigal people. I also extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples joining us today. Uh, the usual housekeeping to start, so we will start with the presentation and, and there will be Q&A at the end and you can ask uh, questions through your Q&A uh, icon um, that's located at the bottom of your screen. I will also like to introduce um, Caroline Watts, who is chairing uh, the Q&A session. Caroline is a Senior Research Fellow at the Surveillance Evaluation and Research Program and was Paul's Joint Supervisor with me, a PhD Supervisor with me. Um, and so without further ado, um, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Paul uh, De Los Trinos, who is or was a, a Ciencia PhD candidate at the, the NTD Research Group, uh, Global Health Program at the Kirby. Uh, and so this is, in fact, his exit seminar, although he's back to the Philippines, where um, he's from originally and where he's doing uh, very exciting work, or at least with fancy titles as Chief um, Scientific Officer at Meta Health Insights and Innovations, among other things. Um, anyway, going back to his PhD, so Paul started his PhD with a Ciencia scholarship um, in, in 2019 to look at the cost effectiveness of preventive chemotherapy for salt transmitted helminths uh, control with myself and Caroline as uh, joint supervisors and also uh, Virginia Wiseman and June uh, Belisario in the Philippines. His thesis includes three papers, uh, one published and one very uh, additional, um, one just accepted in the prestigious The Lancet Regional Health, Western Pacific. Um, and I'll just say a few words. Um, I'd like to mention that it was a pleasure to, to have supervised Paul and accompany his journey through his PhD. Uh, that included navigating uh, COVID-19 and being stuck in the Philippines for a bit longer than initially planned while Australia borders were still closed. Paul took this opportunity very effectively um, to conduct field work and collect data for one of his projects that is now under review as a paper. Um, I think Paul had a very complete and successful PhD experience, including designing tools for data collection that he did himself in the Philippines and trained others to do so in, in Vietnam. Um, and of course, he then did economic analysis that, in my opinion, led to very important uh, papers in the NTD or STH field that I'm sure will be, or I'm convinced they will be highly cited and discussed in the field at a point where endemic hunters, uh, countries um, try to meet the WHO 2030 targets. So uh, Paul, over to you and congratulations once again for your uh, successfully submitted PhD thesis. Yeah, thank you very much Susanna for your very kind uh, introduction. And yes, it was actually a very great um, PhD experience. I'd also like to acknowledge um, I think Virginia um, is also here, I'm one of my secondary supervisors. And I think, I'm not sure if June will be able to attend, but I, I could see his um, project team who is also here. So thank you very much for also attending this seminar. And as what Susanna said, so um, for this session, I'll be presenting my four years work as a, of my PhD, hopefully my hard work. And it's titled um, Cost Effectiveness of Mass Drug Administration for Intestinal Worm Control. So a quick background, so soil transmitted helminths include the roundworms, Aspirus lumbricoides, the hookworms, particularly Nicator americanus, and the whipworm or Trichurus trichura. And this is a major public health concern because moderate to heavy intensity infections could lead to malnutrition among other morbidities. And it's also among the most common neglected tropical diseases with almost a billion people having STH infections in 2019 
and children are among the at-risk groups. It's also endemic in a lot of countries, particularly in Southeast Asian countries such as Vietnam and the Philippines where this thought where this the studies have been conducted. And preventive the main strategy for STH control remains as preventive chemotherapy. So when we say preventive chemotherapy, we are not talking about cancer treatment. We are talking about the regular administration of treatment without prior diagnosis to at-risk groups. In particular, the World Health Organization recommends school-based targeted preventive chemotherapy, primarily for primary school students ages 6 to 12, wherein children are treated by teachers in schools. Now, in the Philippines, this was expanded to include secondary school students, so it now covers 6 to 18 years old. So while a very cost-effective approach, especially um, when compared to a do-nothing approach and targeted treatment before, this could leave out other at-risk groups. For example, the adults who are also at risk for um, hookworm infections. So an alternative is mass drug administration, another PC approach. But here, the entire population is treated without prior diagnosis. Now, while this could alleviate the burden in other at-risk groups, this could also take more resources needed to cover the entire population. So in such a decision problem, a cost-effectiveness analysis could be a useful health economics tool to evaluate the trade-off between the cost and the benefits of either strategies. Now, there have been past cost-effectiveness analysis conducted on preventive chemotherapy for STH. However, they had some limitations which we were tried to address in this um, series of projects as part of my thesis. Now, this thesis is composed of three projects. In the first one, we determined the cost-effectiveness of preventive chemotherapy for STH control in Daklak province in Vietnam where hookworm is the predominant SH species and, we, and where we also have um, primary data coming from a randomized controlled trial led by Susanna Neri. In the second project, we tried to um, provide insights on the impact of long-term preventive, nationwide preventive chemotherapy in the Philippines using a systematic review and meta-analysis. And in the last one, we tried to determine the cost and budget impact of implementing MDA when compared to the expanded school-based targeted preventive chemotherapy in the Philippines. Some key health economics terms that we first need to um, go over before we proceed with the projects. First is the economic cost. So economic, when we talk about economic cost, it talks about the total resources that are needed or used in implementing an intervention. This um, is a combination of the financial cost, which is the actual um, money that we spend in delivering the intervention and the opportunity cost, which is the foregone benefits of the best alternative use of the resource. Next is incremental cost effectiveness ratio. So a lot of the cost effectiveness analysis, the results are often presented as an ICER or incremental cost effectiveness ratio. And this is calculated by um, the cost of the intervention or MDA minus the cost of the comparator, which is school-based targeted PC, divided by the effectiveness of the intervention minus the effectiveness of school-based PC. Now. The ICER tells us the cost added to the cost of standard practice or the status quo to attain one unit of outcome, for example, that is averted. This is compared to a cost-effectiveness threshold, and the lower the ICER is, the more cost-effective the intervention is. And in the Vietnam project, we use disability-adjusted life years averted as the primary outcome, wherein DALI is years lived with disability plus years of life loss due to premature death. Although for this study, we focus only on years lived with disability because mortality to, um, due to STH is not that common. And um, conceptually, one DALI is the loss of one year of healthy life. So what we need to know about DALI is that we want to have less DALI. So we want to avert DALIs as opposed to quality adjusted life years. And then lastly, 95% credible interval it talks about the range at which 95% of the estimates from the modeling iterations fall into. Okay, now proceeding with the first project in Vietnam, again, the cost-effectiveness analysis. Of course, I acknowledge all of my co-authors here, um, particularly my um, supervisors who are also here, Virginia, Caroline, and Susanna. And as Susanna said, um, this was already accepted in Lancet Regional Health, Western Pacific. And what we did here to determine the cost effectiveness of MDA compared to school-based PC is that we conducted a cost survey to determine the annual implementation cost of the two strategies. And then we perform a cost effectiveness analysis using a Markov model to predict the cost and effectiveness of the two strategies 
for implementing them for 10 years and then calculating the ICER. Now, a bit of information regarding Daklak Vietnam, which is the setting of this study. So it has a hookworm infection prevalence of 13.7% in school children and the prevalence in other for other SHE species is negligible or very low. School-based targeted PC has been ongoing since 2007 and there are more than 282,000 school children who are currently benefiting from the um, school-based targeted PC and more than 1.87 million people ages over one year who could benefit if MDA is implemented. This, as mentioned, this is also the site of the code STH trial, which compared MDA with school-based targeted PC for STH control, although we had um, different outcomes um, when it comes to the cost-effectiveness analysis. For the cost survey, we determined the annual implementation cost of the two strategies by conducting a survey with um, health workers, teachers, and program staff. We used two different sets of questionnaires, one for program managers and one from frontline implementers to estimate the economic and financial cost. And we also used the following adjustment for the cost data. Now, this shows us the respondents to the cost survey just to highlight that we represented all of the administrative settings in Vietnam because in each administrative setting, the cost could be different. Once we have collected the, the cost data and processed them, we then use a cost model developed in 3H Pro Healthcare to perform Monte Carlo simulation, not only to estimate the cost of either strategy, but also to account for uncertainty. So we will have a range of values and measures of uncertainties. And the way that this model is structured is that we have the major cost cap categories as the major activities for PC implementations, for example, a benzo procurement and training, followed by the subcategories. Then, once we, are, once we accomplish the cost analysis, we then perform the cost effectiveness analysis comparing the two strategies, assuming annual preventive chemotherapy using albendazole. We follow the CHEERS checklist, which is the standard for economic evaluation. We consider the government payer perspective, wherein only the um, cost incurred by the government would be considered um, 10-year analytic horizon, and we also use the following outcomes for the analysis. We discounted the cost and outcomes by 3% per annum. For the actual um, analysis, so as mentioned, we used a Markov model. Again, this was developed in 3H Pro Healthcare, so we have the diagram on the right. Um, and how this model works is that we divided the population into three groups, preschool, school children, and adolescents and adults, or to shorten it, adults. And the, the way it works is that for school-based targeted PC, only school children are treated, whereas for the MDA, all of the age groups are treated. And the way that this simulation works is at the start of the simulation, the population is distributed to the different health states, these four health states, which correspond to a different STH infection intensity. And each time, each year that they are in those health states, they are incurring cost and outcomes per year. Also, per year, so per annual cycle, so our cycle is one year, the population, the group that are in each health state could transition from one state to another based on the preventive chemotherapy coverage and on transition probabilities. Now, the following shows us the sources of the modeling inputs that we used to populate the model with a lot of data coming from the code STH trial and also on published studies such as the global burden of disease. We also perform one-way and probabilistic sensitivity analysis using the following distributions for the different variables. Now, for the results, we could see here the cost um, for MDA and school-based targeted PC. MDA cost more than four times the co total cost of school-based targeted PC, so for $171,000 compared to $117,000. However, as mentioned, we are treating more people with MDA such that the per-person cost is actually lower at $0.27 cents per person versus $0.43 cents per person for school-based targeted PC. So we are attaining some sort of um, economies of scale. When it comes to the major cost categories, most of a majority of the costs were actually incurred during the actual PC process, which is highlighted um, in orange. And when we see the breakdown of the cost categories, the major cost categories, they appear similar. The main difference would be the magnitude and also the subcategories within those categories. Now, moving on to the effectiveness. So we look at how the two strategies affect the different outcomes. So the first is for the prevalence. 
we could see here, so the red in school-based targeted PC and the blue for MDA, that in the general population, we saw a very drastic reduction in the prevalence for the MDA, while a smaller reduction um, for school-based targeted PC. We could see a more drastic reduction for school-based PC only in school children. However, in MDA, we also see um, similar um, reduction. A similar pattern could be observed when it comes to the prevalence of moderate to heavy intensity infections. The only difference would be have, uh, we would have a lower um, magnitude of the prevalence. When it comes to the DALIS loss, similar um, pattern wherein we see an abrupt um, reduction in the DALIS loss for MDA in the general population as opposed to the minimal reduction school-based PC. And if we will look here with the school children, we could see again that there's a reduction, a marked reduction in the DALIS loss for school children. However, we need to point out that we are only talking about a lower magnitude of DALIS loss here. So it's just a thousand of um, DALIS loss. Whereas when we look into the adults, we are actually talking about between 50, uh, tens of thousands of DALIS. What this tells us is that most of the STH burden that we actually need to get rid of were in the adults, actually adolescent and adults, so more than 11 years old, which are not covered by the um, primary school targeted PC in Vietnam. So we, we could see here with uh, that is averted that we, that in the general population, so that is averted is the, that this are the that is averted if we implement MDA compared to school-based targeted PC. So if we will implement MDA, we would be averting more than 120,000 um, DALIs, with most of those DALIs actually coming from the adults. So there's just very few DALIs coming, uh, being averted in preschool and school children. Again, when we say adults, I mean more than 11 years old, so adolescent and adults. For the main results, we could see here that mass drug administration costs $3.5 million more than school-based PC, so, so this is for the 10-year implementation. However, we are also averting, again, more than 120,000 DALIs if we implement MDA. This gives us an ISR of $28.55 per DALI averted, which is way lower than the cost-effectiveness threshold estimated to be $689 per DALI averted, so suggesting the cost-effectiveness of MDA. We could also see the results for the other outcomes on the right. Now, to test the robustness of the results, we perform sensitivity analysis. And for the one-way sensitivity analysis, this shows us the top five variables that are affecting the ICER. And what we could see here is actually the disability, the disability weight of each infection and also the average cost of each strategy as the leading um, variables affecting the ICER. However, none of the ICERs alone on their own would have enough um, uncertainty to make MDA not cost effective. So even if we look at the variable disability weight for light intensity hookworm, which has the highest uncertainty or could contribute to the highest uncertainty in the ICER, it could only increase the ICER up to around $85 per daily averted, which is still way low than the cost effectiveness threshold. This um, slide shows us the um, probabilistic sensitivity analysis, particularly the scatter plot, which shows us that, um, the ICERs generated from the 10,000 um, iterations of the modeling. Usually, when we present a scatter plot such as this, we would also see the um, cost effectiveness threshold, which is a line. However, we could not see that cost effectiveness threshold line here because it is way out there, up there, because all of the um, ICERs that we generated were very cost effective and were way lower than the threshold. So in this study, we found that the cost per person for MDA is lower than school-based targeted PC. And as expected, the total cost of MDA is higher, but we are averting also more DALIs. So MDA is cost-effective given the current threshold that we estimated around $689 per DALI averted. And these findings are robust to parameter uncertainty. So in areas where STH burden is concentrated in adults and where hookworm predominates, such as in DACLAC, implementing MDA is a cost-effective alternative to school-based targeted PC, which costs lower per person and would avert more DALIs. Of course, um, this study has some um, strengths. 
So it's the first study to actually provide this aggregated cost comparing MDA with school-based targeted PC in Southeast Asia with the other studies um, usually presenting only the total um, cost or the summary cost. And we also accounted for uncertainties using Monte Carlo simulation. And we use primary cost and effectiveness data in comparing MDA with school-based targeted BC, which to our best of knowledge is, is the first uh, study to do such um, analysis. We also perform extensive sensitivity analysis for this study. Of course, we have some limitations as described below. So I'd like to acknowledge um, Van Trong, Van Tai, and Ngoc Yu, who actually assisted in the data collection, who were there in Vietnam to actually collect the data. And then we are uh, our special thanks to the staff of Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, and also the health workers and teachers who responded to the surveys. Now, that is the first study where we found that MDA is a cost-effective approach, at least when STH burden is in adults and we're hope when predominance. Now, we want to understand, would MDA still be useful in other settings? For example, in areas where um, maybe the hookworm is um, um, maybe the burden in other settings, for example, in the Philippines, which has a different health um, systems as well and the way it implements um, preventive chemotherapy. So we tried to do that in the second and the third study. So in the second study, we tried to estimate or provide insights on the impact of um, nationwide preventive chemotherapy for STH infections. So, so we use a meta-analysis and a systematic review and a meta-analysis. Of course, again, I think I'd like to thank my um super my co-authors here. I think Wulan is here. And of course, June, who is also my secondary supervisor. Um, this is already published in PLOS, Neglected Tropical Diseases. However, that particular study also includes the results for schistosomiasis and lymphatic filariasis, which are other entities targeted by PC as well. However, for this presentation, we are going to focus on the results for STH infections. So for this study, we um, follow the PRISMA guidelines, and this was also registered in PROSPERO. And then we included original studies that reported prevalence of STH infections in the Philippines, at least for this presentation. And then we have the following exclusion criteria. So we sourced our uh, studies from electronic databases, uh, as, as, men, as, as presented, and also from gray literature. And we searched the databases using the following search strategy. We performed study screening and selection using EndNote 20, and we did the data extraction in Microsoft Excel. As part of quality control, we also perform checking of article screening and data extraction. I think if I remember correctly, it was Wulan who actually helped us with this. And then uh, mul uh, numerous studies reported mul multiple prevalence estimates. That's why we divided the studies into prevalence estimates organized by year, province, and age group. So for cutoff, we considered a prevalence estimate as pre-PC if it, it was published or, or conducted before year 2006. And then we pulled the pre and post PC prevalence using Meta Excel, uh, wherein we use the inverse variance heterogeneity model. And we also performed the following sensitivity analysis um, with the following scenarios. Okay, for the results. So this is actually a very comprehensive, um, well, it's just a systematic review. So we included 109 studies um, corresponding to 453 prevalence estimates, but um, of this, only 67 studies and 274 prevalence estimates were on STH infections. Most of the studies were cross-sectional studies, and this shows us the Prisma flow diagram from the database search up to the data extraction. And all of the STH, all of the three STH uh, species were properly represented, and most of the studies used cat to cats technique were conducted in school children, and most of them were also conducted after the implementation of um, preventive chemotherapy. We actually have a very good source um, set of data. We even have data from 1946. So on the right shows us um, where the data came from, which provinces of the Philippines. So we can see that there's actually a lot of clustering, wherein we have a lot of data, particularly in the central Philippines, in the western Visayas, or in, in the Visayas regions, actually. Now, for the, the results of the meta-analysis, we could see here that for the prevalence of any STH, meaning positivity for either Ascaris, Tricuris, or Hookworm, 
we found a significant reduction in the prevalence for ascaris and tricuris only in school children. So 63% to 19.4 and 65.1 to 23.5%. Again, this was only found in school children because for the adults and the preschool, we did not find significant reduction when we compare the pre-PC pre -PC to post-PC. Now, if we look at the moderate to heavy intensity infections, we found significant reductions in all age groups, so only for moderate to heavy intensity infections for both Ascaris and Tricuris, as we could see here in red. So what does this tell us? So we found that there's lower post-PC prevalence of Ascaris and Tricuris, but only in school children, and then um, lower post-PC prevalence of moderate to heavy intensity Ascaris and Tricuris for the general for all the population groups. Although, as expected, the heterogeneity was high with the Higgins um, measure, mostly above 90. We have noted methodological and reporting variability. And the key takeaway here is the STH burden, particularly for Ascaris and Tricuris, persists in the Philippines, particularly in groups that are not covered by expanded school-based targeted PC, i.e. the adults. Now, this is the first meta-analysis to compare the prevalence of STH infections before and after the initiation of large-scale treatment programs. And we also include a very comprehensive list of studies. Of course, we have also the following limitations. Now, in that second study, we found that, yes, the school-based target BC actually had an impact, particularly in school children, and that we saw that there's still... Um, persisting burden, STH burden, when it comes to the group not targeted by the expanded school-based PC. And we've learned from the first project that MDA would be a useful strategy if the burden are actually concentrated in the adults. So I guess what we also want to know here is if we would implement MDA in some areas in the Philippines, what would be the cost and maybe the budget impact to the government? And that's actually what we tried to find out in this last um, project. So a quick background, um, in the Philippines, nationwide biannual school-based targeted PC has been ongoing since 2006, initially targeting primary school students aged 6 to 12. However, this was expanded to include secondary school students in 2016, such that now it covers students ages 6 to 18 years. Now, we do not know how the cost of MDA compares with the expanded school-based targeted PC because to the best of our knowledge, this is only being implemented in the Philippines. Um, we selected a particular region in the Philippines, namely Zamwanga Peninsula. And this is because in one of its provinces, so Zamwanga del Norte, which is this one, the one on the top. Zamwanga del Norte is also endemic for lymphatic filariasis. And for lymphatic filariasis, the strategy is mass drug administration of both albendazole and diethylcarbamazine. What this tells us is that Zamboanga del Norte and the Zamboanga region in, in general provides us a unique opportunity to compare the MDA of albendazole, which is being conducted in lymphatic filariasis areas, and the school-based targeted, expanded school-based targeted BC, which is being implemented in the other provinces. So in, some, in this region, the prevalence of ascaris, trichures, and hookworms were 16%, 18%, and 3%, respectively. As noted, we have um, higher burden of Ascaris and Tricuris um, in the Philippines. And we also have three point, almost 3.8 million people, age one year old and above, um, who could benefit for, for in MDA implementation in the region. And almost 1.2 million people who are currently benefiting from the expanded school-based targeted BC. Now, the, for, now, the cost analysis here shares a lot of the methods for the Vietnam project. The, the major difference really is the setting and, and that we did not perform an effectiveness analysis due to a lack of data, which we could discuss more about later. Um, we also use a government payer perspective here, and then we compared the MDA with expanded school-based targeted PC, um, which as a standard practice. Again, we assume annual treatment with albendazole. And the cost applies for the entire Zamboanga Peninsula region. We also use two questionnaires similar with Vietnam, one for program managers and one for frontline implementers. And this shows us the respondents for the survey. Again, highlighting that we represented all of the administrative settings in the Philippines. 
Now for data processing, we encoded the data in Microsoft Excel and we also use the following adjustments when it comes to the cost data, including the conversion to US dollars. After collecting the cost um, data from the cost survey and processing them, we perform the cost analysis again using a cost model. So this was similar to the cost model used in Vietnam. However, we have to adapt it to reflect the settings in the Philippines because the way that we implement school-based PC in the Philippines has some nuances or differences when it comes compared to how it is implemented in Vietnam. And then for the budget impact, we estimated the um, five-year budget impact to the government of implementing MDA. We used a similar model for the use in the cost analysis. However, we had to like adjust the model to allow the calculation of the financial impact. And of course, we also use undiscounted financial cost. Now for the results, um, we could see here that similar to the results in the Vietnam cost analysis, the total cost of MDA is also higher than the expanded school-based target PC. However, what's very glaring here is that whereas in Vietnam, MDA costs four times more than school expanded school-based PC, here it's actually cost, it costs more but I think it's just 20 to 30% um, higher. So it's just less than $200,000 higher than expanded school-based targeted PC. And again, the cost per person is much lower for MDA, 22 per cents per person compared to 57 cents per person for expanded school-based PC. Most of the costs, again, were incurred during the actual PC process shown in orange. And again, the major categories have similarities when it comes to how much they contribute to the total cost, but the major differences would be the magnitude and the actual subcategories. Now, looking at the financial impact, we could see here the financial cost of the two strategies and also the financial impact of MDA. And just worth to note that we actually rounded all the values here to the nearest $1,000 to actually um, allow ease of reporting. Um, also because there's a lot of uncertainty anyway with the uh, modeling exercise. So for MDA here and expanded school-based PC, and we have the financial impact on the last column. As expected, we will incur um, an additional cost for the purchase of albendazole if we will implement MDA because we will be covering more people. However, interesting to note that community sensitization, which is the Activities concerned with increasing awareness and maybe compliance on the interventions, for example, health promotion campaigns, is actually more efficient when we conduct it in the community-based setting. Also, as expected, we are um, expecting more expenses for the personnel needed in administering treatments because we are covering the entire population. And the total annual increased cost would be $148,000 per year or $740,000 for the entire region for five years. And what this study um, tells us is that the cost per person for MDA is lower than the expanded school-based targeted PC um, in Zamboanga Peninsula. And this was very similar to what we found in Vietnam. And also, in the incremental cost of implementing MDA in the region, it actually represents, so I wasn't able to present the budget of the DOH, but it represents 0.2% of the regional DOH budget. And it could possibly address the continuing STH burden in the population, which we found in the second study. So this is the first cost analysis to compare expanded school-based targeted PC with MDA. Again, as the expanded school-based targeted PC is only to our best of knowledge, is only being implemented in the Philippines. And again, we disaggregated the cost and we accounted for uncertainty using Monte Carlo simulation. Now, we had this uh, limitation that we were unable to um, um, include some of the program expenses, uh, sorry, um, cost categories. And for this study, I'd like to thank Nieto Fernandez of the Department of Health um, Regional Office in the Zamboanga Peninsula who helped um, in the data collection, actually, he was my uh, consultant when I was there. So whenever I need um, help in coordination, um, he was providing assistance. And also the staff of Department of Health, Department of Education, local government units, health workers, and teachers who responded to the survey. Also for the Australian Center for Control and Elimination of NTDs, which funded this project, and University of the Philippines, which I think is well represented in this call. 
um, for being our academic partner when I, I was um, conducting the cost survey. So in summary, what did we find in my four years of work as a PhD student? So we found that in Daklak, Vietnam, MDA has a lower cost per person than school-based Sagad PC and is cost-effective in controlling STH. Again, in areas where the STH is concentrated in adults. STH infection remains a public health concern in the Philippines, particularly in adults, which the current um, control strategy does not um, cover. And in Zamboanga Peninsula, the incremental cost which represent of MDA, which represents 0.2% of the regional DOH budget, and the much lower cost per person could potentially, so potentially, make MDA an affordable alternative to the expanded school visa and PC. Although, of course, this has to um, require further studies on the affordability. Thus, in areas where the STH burden is concentrated in adults, implementation of MDA is a cost-effective and potentially affordable alternative to school-based targeted PC. And in particular, in the Philippines, based on an economic perspective alone, because of course, we know that decision makers would have other considerations as well. So based on the economic perspective, implementation of MDA in view of the expanded school-based targeted PC considering it's um would be um something that should be considered considering its marginal incremental cost and that it can address the persisting hth burden not only in school age children but also in other groups such as the adults and that actually concludes my presentation again um thank you very much for attending this presentation and maybe i could take uh, maybe just a few minutes to thank everyone who have been instrumental. I was supposed to add some pictures in my slides, but this will be recorded, so <laughs> I didn't um, add them. But I'd like to thank also, especially my supervisors for all their help in my candidature, especially to Susana, who has always been there even before I started my PhD. Um, and even to the last minute of my PhD submission, we were always in touch. And all of my supervisors, um, June, um, Virginia, and Caroline, and also to June, who has been I've been working with um, since 2013, and all of my um, friends who are actually here, who are um, too many to pension, but yeah. All right. So thank you very much, and hope you learned something in the presentation. Thank you, Paul. That was great. Um, just a reminder that the chat is open, Q&A, so please add um, any questions. I've got a couple of things here. One's from comments from Sophie. Congratulations, Paul, for the fantastic work. For the outcome, um, just you've used DELIs and should be interested to know how did you implement the DELI calculations in the Markov model? Yes, thank you very much, Sophie, for that awesome, um, wonderful question. Yes, actually, um, for the disability adjusted life is we use the um, anemia, and the um, burden of the heavy infestation as the as the primary as the main sequelae contributing to DALIs. And then we use the disability weight for the globe from the global burden of disease studies. And then we use the study from Barch et al. to derive the probability of anemia. So for, we had the probability that a hookworm infection could develop into anemia using the study by Barch et al. So yes, in quickly we use the DALIs estimation were mostly based on the anemia and also the heavy infestation based on the global burden of disease. And I guess the other thing to add, Paul, is there's no years of life lost. So we didn't have that complication in the model. Uh, yes, we have no years of life lost in the... We focus on the years lived with disability. Exactly, yeah. And um, from Virginia, a uh, great presentation, a couple of comments, questions. Um, Interventions like MDA are likely to exhibit economies or diseconomies of scale. What are your thoughts on this? Thank you very much, Virginia, for that question. Yes, actually, that is a very good point because um, we could see that, like for example, MDA, which actually covers um, more people, we exhibited some sort of economies of scale with having a lower cost per person. However, in both the studies in Vietnam and the Philippines, we only um, use the actual population. We only use the actual population in the clap and the actual population in Zamboanga Peninsula. So we did not explore other population sizes. That could be the subject of future studies or maybe future analysis. But um, of course, for any public health programs, economies of scale is really important. And I think that is what I, one of the, I think, um, key point of the MDA is that 
you are we are already incurring a lot of program costs. So I guess one of the big, biggest difference here, especially when we were doing this um, research, is that for public health intervention, much of the costs were not really on the drug. Much of the costs were program expenses. And these program expenses, yes, they sometimes increase with increased number of population, but do you also have a very big um, fixed cost and if you will be covering more people, then we would be exhibiting economies of scale. But again, in these studies, we did not examine the different population sizes. We only examined the actual population. And who might use this evidence? Um, government donors, others. Um, I think this would be a very important evidence, specifically um, working in public health for the WHO, for the World Health Organization. Because as we know, um, a lot of government programs whether it's in particular from my personal experience in the Philippines, they would follow whatever WHO recommends. So you might publish your study, for example, in Lancet or in other journals, but if that is not being recommended by WHO, it might be a bit more difficult to um um consider that um recommendation. That's why, if I remember, if Susanna actually already presented the preliminary results of this study of the Vietnam study at least to WHO, which I think a, a good step. But hopefully this will be found useful by the WHO and other decision makers as we've been doing school-based PC for a long time and it's actually very cost effective. But maybe we could start looking actually into the other groups where um, STH burden is also pre, um, very heavy. Of course, considering the other considerations of decision makers because decision makers would not just consider economics alone. Thank you. Um, Paul, I've just got another sort of question, comment. I guess it's uh, thinking about um, coverage versus compliance and what sort of assumptions you made and if there was any difference between Vietnam and the Philippines and if there's any difference between school-based PC and mass drug administration. Okay. So when we say coverage versus compliance, I would assume that when we say coverage, it's the reported um, PC coverage and the compliance would be how many of those who reported to have taken it actually took it. So I, I would uh, make based on that assumption. What's good with our Vietnam study is we actually relied on the randomized controlled trial data from the code STH trial such that um, we actually know that from baseline to the follow-up, how many of those were actually um, whose uh, STH infection got reduced or got um got cured, and that would um provide insights on the compliance. Um, we did not perform an effectiveness analysis in the Philippines, but that is a very important concern because in one of my previous projects, actually, um, if June is actually here, in a project in um one of the provinces in the Philippines in Masbate, they were they've been reporting, for example, more than hundred percent. Um, report um, MDA coverage, PC coverage, because the de denominator is also different, but they are reporting very high coverage in preschool age two, uh, children. But when we examine the parasitological status of the preschool, there's actually around 70% prevalence in the preschools, um, preschool children, and then 40% of, of the infections are moderate to heavy. So that would not happen if you have a high compliance. So this coverage compliance gap, I think, is actually one of also the major um, concern when it comes to PC. It's something that could be a subject of further studies. But rolling out MDA, this would be a very important concern, especially as opposed to school-based PC. It's, it's a much easier to monitor compliance in school-based PC because it's directly observed, everyone seeing what others are doing. But when it comes to a house-to-house -house approach, Sometimes, I'm not saying that this applies for everyone, sometimes the health workers would report that they have administered a drug because their performance is being evaluated on the PC coverage and they get monetary benefits if they report a high PC coverage. So I guess that's a continuing challenge that has to be addressed, a very important challenge, in fact. Mm. And I guess especially over time as well, where you could actually see decreasing compliance, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm not sure about I'm I think there's not a lot of evidence, I think, on that. But for school-based PC, since it is directly observed, and again, in a school-based PC, the health workers, the teachers there, all of the parents are there. Um, it's very hard to like um not act not report 
not not report the tweet report the treatment without actually have um administering the treatment so i just uh, want to add that i mean yes and no because kids may just not show up to school so but i guess the point here is that again that would be interesting to address using a um, you know a mixture of cost effectiveness analysis that includes modeling and 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 sort of other techniques where basically the issue here is that as you decrease coverage and or co compliance your effectiveness is going to be closer and closer to what you would obtain by just doing uh, school-based deworming. So you could come up with models and a, a, a threshold of what you, what's your minimum compliance for mm -hmm. that MDA is still cost-effective compared to school-based um, deworming. Yes, something to think about future, Paul. Um, just a question from Curtis. Can you speculate on how these data could be generalized to other contexts outside the Vietnam and the Philippines? Uh, yes. So <clears throat> at least for the Vietnam study, since it is a cost effectiveness analysis, we we are um we found that um the MDA is cost effective if the burden is on adults, if if the most of the burden we're actually concentrated in adults. So in other countries, if we did a uh, maybe a prevalence survey and a parasitological assessment, and we found that um the burden is actually not on school children anymore, but on the adults or those not being covered by school-based PC, then we should implement um MDA. For the cost, of course, the cost would be very different for each country, but if we perform the appropriate conversions. So, for example, con con converting um, the values into international dollars and also accounting for the differences in, in the implementation, I think this would be of use as well to other countries. And um, just a final question. Congratulations, Paul. Just wondering if this finding is applicable okay. for other NTDs like FISTO, for instance, which are often lumped with STH MDA in some other settings. Okay. Uh, that's a great question as well. Actually, STH is um, already late to the party for the MDA party <laughs> because MDA is already being implemented for lymphatic filariasis and even for schistosomiasis. So in the Philippines, um, everyone ages um, 5 to 65, I recall, in um, all endemic um, villages, they are being treated. So it's only STH actually that's is not, not being um where MDA is not yet implemented. And of course, they use evidence um, to support those. Uh, yes, and also to highlight that uh, regarding to the applicability in other settings, so I want to emphasize that the Vietnam study also focused on the hookworm infections. So yes, it, in areas where we find that hookworm infection is a predominant species, we could consider the MDA would be a cost-effective approach. Of course, because there's no one says when it comes to the efficacy of the drug with different species as well. Great. Well, I think on that note, Susanna, do you have anything you want to add? Well, just uh, just to discussion, just to add a few more things that in terms of um, you know this debate about who we can use this information. Um, yeah, I think we will keep pushing with you know through WHO and the forums that. Um, we participate to sort of um, advocate for this work. But I think in the Philippines, now that you're there and with June and everybody, um, your contacts in the region, I think it would be really important to follow this up at the local level because the Philippines is actually one of the few examples of a country that decided to go beyond what the WHO recommends. And, you know, so there's not a lot of countries doing this expanded. Up. I don't know of any other that goes to high schools as well. And, and that is basically uh, the Philippines buying the, the medications to do this deworming. So you may know that for NTDs, a lot of the MDA or PC programs rely on, on donations of the medications by pharmaceutical companies. And they come earmarked to whatever age groups the WHO was recommended them. And the, in the case of STH, that's the issue basically the donations only cover school aid children. So basically, uh, the Philippines then has to buy the medications to be able to cover additional age groups. So um, I think because there's already that appetite to go beyond what the recommendations from WHO say that potentially they could go even further. Um, 
anyway, I do think this is really valuable work and um, quite unique um, in the field of NTDs to do cost effectiveness analysis based on real data, kind of primary data collection, both from the cost perspective and in the case of Vietnam, also from the effectiveness perspective. So I do think this will be um, a very important contribution to, to the literature and to the debate about um, expanding or not uh, dewarming strategies for, for SDH. So once again, congratulations, Paul. And just to finish a note from June, um, that he agrees with Paul and Susanna, and certainly he'll take this forward from the Philippines end. So congratulations, Paul, from June. So thanks everybody for attending and um, yeah, well done, Paul. And um, we'll close the session. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks.